Kyoto cuisine is famous throughout Japan for its refined, traditional, and delicate taste. As a city with 1.475 million people, it is known for its geisha and tea house culture, its wooden houses, and Shinto shrines. As a city surrounded by lush mountains, it's known for its quality water and its technique in preserving foods. I'm Christine Kaalo of Girl Traveler. I'm gonna take you inside my travel and food adventures so you can find confidence traveling alone too. Today, I'm gonna take you inside my top 10 must try foods of Kyoto. Tucked away in a shotengai with over 140 shops lining a five block long shopping street, Nishiki Market is known as Kyoto's Kitchen. It is one of the top places to go to sample a lot of Kyoto foods. One thing Kyoto is really known for or famous for is their way of preserving foods. So in this case, some things are dried, other things are pickled. This kind of looks like a radish. Mm. This is pickled bamboo. This is supposed to be a specialty of Kyoto. I have pickled with soy sauce. Very nice, and the bamboo shoot is very soft. The market has been around for around 400 years, and it might be one of my favorite Japanese markets so far. It's filled with all types of food varieties from specialty foods to your occasional eye-catching snacks and local flavors. Fish cake is another thing you might want to try when you're in Kyoto. Butter and potato fish cake. Mm, it's basically fish cake with soft potato in it with a buttery taste. I don't even know how to relate to anything I've tried because I haven't tried anything like this before. What's in there? It's a red ginger and then cod fish. Mm. Definitely the ginger is kind of like absorbing some of the fish cake taste. It's kind of got a very gingery zesty feel to it. Kind of like, I feel like it's like cleaning my palate somehow from the fish cake. Yuba is a popular soy product. It's a tofu skin and it's used to make a variety of things from soft serve to donuts and more. So we've got some yuba right here. It is soy, it's soy milk right here. Cost 300. Interesting, so the taste of the yuba is not anything like vanilla even though it's white <laughs> it is kind of like tasting a slightly sweetened creamy version or ice cream version of tofu the judgment is still out on the the yuba flavor itself because it's a flavor that takes a little bit of getting used to in terms of the vanilla family it's a very distinct flavor mm. You'll find many matcha green tea and matcha desserts here in Kyoto. And that's because Uji is the birthplace of Japanese green tea. If I can mix a little bit of the yuba or soy with cinnamon, it might make sakura. It's a kind of like a spice that kind of hits the back of my throat right there. What I'm really excited about is a bamboo matcha. I don't know if I'll be able to taste the bamboo, yeah, I think I can taste the bamboo. It's kind of like, you know, the bamboo shoot has kind of like a, I want to say a yellow taste to it. <laughs> a light tasting root with a really corny feel or uh, slightly tinges of a corny taste. Together it's just all good. Between this and the yubo, this is obviously my favorite. It's got the most flavors to it. The yubo is very light and it was a little peculiar. Not bad, but just peculiar. It goes to show you, the Japanese can make soft serve out of anything. Not to worry, even if you didn't get the chance to get out to Uji, you can still find a lot of tea shops and matcha green tea products in the city. So this is a shop with all matcha products, from desserts to teas to little snacks. This shrine is dedicated to tea. The founder discovered matcha in China and brought it back to Japan as a way to keep the monks of the temple from falling asleep. It doesn't have any smell. 
So the founder of this area, Kenji, brought matcha over from China to plant here because matcha, the tea itself, is made from crushed or pulverized leaves. And so when you're drinking the tea, you're actually drinking the actual leaf versus just steeping the matcha in, in a cup of hot water. That means you have more antioxidants as well as more caffeine. One thing listed as a must-try food in Tokyo is yudofu. It's a boiled tofu that's placed in a hot pot with vinegar sauce. Mm. Soft, creamy. I just hit into the bonito. It tastes really good. I love bonito. But you can see how soft it is right here. Or it could just be I have really bad chopstick skills. I don't feel like there's much you can do to dress up tofu. The Japanese tend to do it very minimally. And the idea is to really appreciate the tofu itself. Now, udon is another must-try dish of Kyoto, but bamboo shoot, because of Arashima forest, or bamboo forest, that would be something to try as well. <laughs> I walked away and I was like, do I want the bamboo shoots? Yes, I do. For shock, that broth is good. If it's soy sauce, it's a very light one. The udon has already absorbed the wakame flavor a little. I can taste it without even having eaten the wakame. In this cold weather, the udon tastes especially good. Now, the big star is the bamboo. Mm. I want to say there's a little soy and a little, a little bit of vinegar. Just a smidge of vinegar. And a very sweet one. Mm. That shoot is really good. There was only two in here and it's like gold. I feel like those bamboo shoots were like a dollar a piece. <laughs> it's really good. Stand-up eating is common in Japan and Miyako is a popular stand-up fast food chain which you can visit. Dishes come in healthy proportions while the prices are affordably low. Kind of like a small, small, small eatery. It's stand-up room only and kind of intimate so I can't really take you inside like I can't really show you around as much if you watch my ramen video that I did in Tokyo with my friend Brian who's like a ramen expert he was telling me that smaller shops they charge really low and the only way they can do it is due to high turnover a popular must-try soba in Kyoto is Nishin soba it's a buckwheat noodle with herring cooked in soy sauce and sugar now I didn't get to try it I tried the wakame instead and it was still very delicious. It's pretty bare bones. The, the dashi is really actually good. It's kind of got a bit of a sour like ume taste. The noodles, he just kind of like emptied out from a packet, like a ready-made packet, threw it in. Everything was like kind of like already cut or prepared. That was really good. I like it. <sighs> that was like the cheapest bowl of soba I've had so far. from other types of okonomiyaki like say in Osaka. Osaka will mix the okonomiyaki together, all the ingredients. But Kyoto, they'll create it like a pancake or like a crepe and wrap it up. A whole medley going on in my mouth. So many different ingredients. A lot of things are just exploding all at the same time. Osaka's okonomiyaki is kind of like already found at unison melt it together and creates one experience. This one creates an experience where your mouth is working in many different ways, many different flavors are going off individually. Pontecho Alley is known for selling kaiseki meals, or traditional multi-course Japanese meals, which were once served to nobles. They are beautifully plated meals and they tend to be a bit pricey. I love that Japan has like their own special edition version of things. There are specialty products or seasonal products that are starting to come out in some of the foods. You'll see sakura sales with like sakura products. During sakura season, I've been noticing things like matcha green tea, sakura, and strawberries being heavily infused in some of the products that you'll find around the city. Join me weekly for more Girl Traveler videos. It's through resourcefulness and viewers like you who keep my channel going. So if you love what I do and want to see me continue creating solo travel videos, why not support me on Patreon? Jump behind the scenes with others for my latest trip updates and reward perks. As always, links in the description box below. Until then, 
Travel safe, smart, and fun, and may the grr be with you.